Welcome everyone to Thanks Grappling 3! We've got four incredible matches here for you as you feast the night away and sleep that turkey off. I am the Colonist. And I'm Josh Ageddon, and I'm not allowed to eat my Thanksgiving food until the show's over. So let's get this shindig on the road, because I'm hungry. Well, apparently Michael Corleone's going to be bringing us plates midway, but we got Ermac and Rain, the tag team who lost, unfortunately, in the Soul Calibur Gauntlet to the Forgotten yeah. Fighters, won a tag team match with said Forgotten Fighters. So They had a good showing, though. They had a good showing. They did. I mean, Ermac got a victory, which is not something that happens very often. Thankfully, his children <laughs> very yeah. happy about that. Although, hey, wait a second! Oh my god! Super kick! What the? Where did Masters come from? I didn't even get word that the feed was up coming and changing! I, I, I approve of this. Normally, I'm not I'm not fond of these backstage shenanigans, well, but well, this dude has been getting screwed over all year. Kick his ass, Ken Masters. Yeah, well, and, and we saw Ken Masters get a super kick on Sagan. Now, Sagan was just going to be the manager here. He was just going to manage, oh God, shovel to the <laughs> stomach. And and oh, Ken Masters no. is incensed here. Oh no, not another Hadouken. Oh, God. oh my God, it's a God is laid out in the parking lot. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. You can only push a man so far. Yeah, no, and that just and howling in victory is Ken Masters. <laughs> and now finish. going back to his car and now we're back here. And I don't even know if Ermac and Rain know what happened. Uh, but, wow. well, they, yeah, that, that was a, a a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. <laughs> but Palpatine quotes aside, I guess that means that Sagat will not be joining Nathan Von Schrader and Simon not. Belmont to accompany them to this tag match. Ken Masters altered the deal. Pray he doesn't alter it any further. Yeah, literally. And and you know Sagat's not going to be happy about that, especially as we approach Oblivion time come the end of December. Here come the Forgotten Fighters. And do they even know what's happened here? They're probably wondering, uh, where's Sagat? <laughs> well, but you never know, Josh, again, because we've seen Sagat just show up in the middle of things before. If you recall yeah. the King of the Spring tournament where he just show up mid-match, maybe they think he's coming still. To borrow a phrase from Jerry the King Law, or he popped up at the temple on prom night. Yeah, he's uh, Sagat, who is, uh, and to quote JR, Sagat, who is a pimple on the ass of life, uh, <laughs> just got popped pretty hard by Ken Masters. Yeah. And now all that pus is lying out in the parking lot, and we hopefully will get a custodian to come clean it up. Who do you got in this one, Josh, again? I honestly, um, since they were expecting to have backup and now they're not getting it, I think that gives Ermo, the, <laughs> Ermo and Elmac, it yeah. gives, uh, gives Ermac and here we go. the advantage. Yeah, absolutely. I well, stop thinking about his kid. Well, you think Ermac's kind of pissed that he's working on Thanksgiving? You know, <laughs> I mean, Probably. his Probably. kids are, I'm sure, watching Fireman's Carry take a drink or a scoop of ice cream. And... What do you think this match does as far as tag title aspirations for either of these two teams? Of course, with Ermac and Rain, this is their really their first tag team outing. I mean, since this is their first tag team outing, if they want to get close to the tag team titles, they need to start things off with a victory. Because yeah. you become a tag team and then you lose, yeah, you're probably not going to get anywhere near the tag team titles. Yeah, well, yeah absolutely. And, well, and you know, with the way the Forgotten Fighters have been competing lately, they have definitely got a lot more momentum on their side. Punch to the dick. Message oh, received. He needs that. How else is he going to make more kids with Elmo? Yeah, literally. And referee Kevin James is the one assigned to this contest. Not, Elmo gets really upset. Oh with, yeah. With, uh, with whenever he has a broken penis. Oh well, absolutely. Oh, and a punch to the small of the back from Rain. Who, you know, we saw him in a battle royal. We saw him in this Soul Calibur gauntlet. But I still really can't get a good read on this dude. I can't get a good read on anything oh, right now because the, the, those calves and those thigh muscles are blocking the hard cam. I know, and there they are. The captain of the Thunder Thighs Express. In comes Simon, or, uh, uh, Nathan Von Schrader with a thrust <laughs> kick that decapitated Rain. And now, now choking the life. Oh. Come on now. That's not oh, necessary. Right. And Oh, it looked like he was trying to do it behind Kevin James's back. And the second Kevin turned around, he just hit the skids. Yeah. He's trying to rain on his parade. No, uh, that's a good job. Puns aside, good job by Kevin James to stay alert into that. We uh, referee Will Sasso is at home recovering still uh, <laughs> from from how it happened just a few weeks ago in the steel cage between Chrono Cross and Tenacious E. 
He's lucky Eclipse didn't lunar eclipse him on top of somebody. Yeah, like definitely. The While the other ranges are still recovering from it. Oh god! What a squash into the corner. And And Raymond's like, you know what? I I'm pissed now. <laughs> yeah, that almost woke him up a little bit. As uh, yeah. Belmont kind of lost the opportunity to capitalize on that as he was thrown back into him. Yeah. But. When we got one in this matchup, John? Well, the experience factor would make me think that the forgotten fighters probably have the edge. Oh, God, what a power slam. And a oh, cover yeah. by Nathan Von Trader. One, two, and Elmrak right there to break up the count. And yeah, uh, that's a good tag team partner right there. Even though they're a new, new er, new ish tag team. You gotta have those instincts. Well, and and the good thing about Ermac and Rain is that they are a part of the same universe, so it's not yeah, like their paths haven't crossed before. So that does give them at least a little bit of an advantage. But but at the same time, you see what the size advantage is. You see where the power advantage is, and you see even though Sagat isn't there, how much Sagat's tutelage has really benefited both of these guys. Yeah, exactly. By the way, have you got um, Mortal Kombat 1, or are you planning on getting Mortal I Kombat I want to play it so badly. I have not gotten it, looks, it yet. It looks good. It looks so good. I'm, I'm a big fan of their story modes, and it looks like they've added a lot of depth into their story mode. I haven't had the balls to watch, like, the four-hour cinematic adventure. Oh, nice hip toss from <laughs> her back there. It's better to experience it than to just watch it on YouTube. Yeah, that, well, it's funny, because that's what I've done for Mortal Kombat from, for 9, 10, and 11. And that's how I learned that Ronda Rousey is a horrible actress. And nice shoulder block, <laughs> double takedown. Uh, fair warning, Megan Fox is someone in the game, and uh, I've heard and seen that she's also pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, half of it's for the body more than the voice, I think. But that's that's a story for another time. And speaking of somebody who knows flesh very well, Ermac <laughs> has got a great <laughs> chin lock on a... Uh, on there, I mean, obviously Elmo. I mean, he's more familiar with fur than flesh, but that's... Yeah, I was going to say he's more familiar with uh, Muppet. Or I guess, yeah, it's soft Muppet. velvet or whatever they make Muppets out of. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you know what they make Muppets out of, leave it in the comments, folks. And yeah. Who, give us the name, number, and address of your nearby Muppet manufacturer. That's right. And, I mean, that might all be just exposited to Amazon now, but in any case... Yeah. Now back and now look at this the, the oh god a low blow but oh, how wow. smart was it of Nathan von Schrader to get out of the Rain and Souls corner before he hit that low blow to make the tag that that was smart but Elmo just shaking his head from home well he and knows and the kids were like but and the kids were like you promised us a sister yeah well I mean that could still happen let's let's not say it won't. Not, but, not if he takes too many more of those low blows. Well, remember, uh, so Ermac has good. many. You know, there but one, but he's got a lot. Oh, God, well, maybe not anymore after that right hand out of the ring. But Man, not any. Right yeah, definitely. And right now, Simon Belmont not really in a good position here. Wait a minute. Going up to the top and swatted away from Ermac. That was a nice dodge by uh, And oh, what, what is it? And I would help him drop. And he got everybody. Oh, he got all three of them. And everybody's down. Wow. That was He's impressive. The Red Sea with that one. Nathan Von Schrader with reckless abandon and and got both members he intended for and then some. Yeah. And, and now the Simon up. Belmont's freaking quads, you kind of can't help but hit him if you go high risk. Yeah, absolutely. And now now and again high risk. Worried. And this time Belmont thinking better of, oh, maybe he's not. Back up top, and again, misses just jumped over. Oh my god! Just jumped you over Von Schrader. On yeah, this is uh, and this is a degenerated a little bit. This resembled a tag match to start, but now we're just in brawl town. Yeah. And folks, this is just the opening match. This is just yeah, the opening match. We had a lot coming up tonight, Josh. Again, we got the clean up your apartment match between uh, Captain Planet and Doctor Dirty. Dave Chappelle and Eminem, Kratos in his first match since he lost the world title to Shiva, all here tonight on Thanks Grappling. Yes, it's been crazy so far, and I want to say, I commend Simon Belmont for not letting this end and count out. He keeps going in the ring to break things up. Well, they know that they can't get away with too many bad finishes like that. You know, eventually they start Ooh. losing credibility. Nice fall away slam there right on the edge of the ramp, but Rain yeah. right there to make sure that Simon Belmont did not capitalize on that momentum. Exactly. And like you said, it's more impressive to win a match via pinfall or submission than by, you know, count out or yep. disqualification. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And and with the way that these guys fought in that Soul Calibur gauntlet where they didn't have that option, you know that they, they can do it and want to do it, but further make a statement. And again, the count breaks at eight. I believe Ermac yeah. is the legal man in this situation. That's why Belmont broke up the count. And now back into the ring goes the ring. Ermac. There we go. There we go. All yeah. right. Well, now we're kind of resetting here. Trying to get I want to see an Ermac elbow so bad. Well, or he could very well could get it. Oh, and a punch to the dick. Oh, it's a payback punch to the dick. That's right. Message received. And uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, you just have to punch a man in the nuts to send a message. Uh, yeah. A Bizzle is the one to be able to tell that, but vaulting out of the ring this time did Ermac, and I guess Ermac's not done brawling. Did you see his back bounce off the apron? I did see his back bounce off the apron. Uh oh, Ermac up to the top. What's he got planned? Oh! On Schrader just in time! Oh, dude. And that is the tag team work. That right there is the tag team work that makes me think that these two are the favorites. That was, and not only did he get crotched in the top rope, he fell and landed on the outside of the ring. Yeah, and you see, you talk about where Ermac's neck hit the apron. Oh, went for a spear over the top. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, does it say anything that Von Schrader and Simon Belmont have really been making a lot more high risk moves than they normally do against these two opponents? Yeah, it is surprising. Uh, oh, power slam on Rain on the outside. That was a big power He's slam. Mad at Rain for doing the Samoa Joe nope. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And now, oh God, what, oh wait a second, Castlevania Crumbler on the outside. And Rain might be out, that might be it for Rain. Nice neck breaker there from Ermac, who is now in a one-on-two situation. Oh! oh. A German yeah. suplex that he yeah. ran up to Ermac to deliver. This has been a hell of an opening time. Yeah, these guys, all four of these guys have been just going after it. And this yeah. is the kind of competition CIW has brought to the table all year, folks. And we are going to have the Golden Cannon Awards during the next couple of weeks in December to see what you thought was the best of 2023. So stay tuned for that as well. Oblivion, our final pay-per-view of the year, December 30th and 31st, coming up. We'll talk a little bit more about the card in the next couple of weeks. As long as Liv Morgan isn't involved. Never. 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 <laughs> But we do know, as of Halloween special, that Natalie Portman, the women's champion, will defend her belt against Yuna at Oblivion. So we have at least one of those matches set up. What does that say about Yuna? She literally just debuted and she already has a title match. Because she's just been running through these. Gonna look at the way she's beaten the opponent. She made a three-minute match out of Lara Croft and a five-minute match out of Black Cat. So, like, why wouldn't she get a shot at this point? She's impressive. Yeah, she she very much is impressive. And we're going to see if she can capitalize that in championship form. But we'll see what the Natalie World Order has to say about this. But back to this match. A nice arm drag. Arm drag takedown right there. That was nice. Yeah, and, and Ermac is showing a lot more fire than we've seen in the past couple of years with Ermac. It's amazing what having kids can do for the psyche of a man. <laughs> I know, right? I was, just, I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, now, wait a second. Now a stalled. Oh, no. Oh, no. A oh, no. big gut buster into the ropes, and Ermac is out, man. Somehow, yeah. still standing his reign, but both of the combatants not looking too good at this point. I mean, uh, Ermac has been in this match for a while. He needs to tag out for Rain, but Rain also uh, had that Castlevania crumbler dunk him on the outside. Yeah, so. and it shows. It yeah. shows. He is not looking great. I don't know if a tag to Rain is really going to help Ermac in this case. Yeah, the, I mean, you tag in one injured guy, substitute for another injured guy. I mean, it's just it's just not a great night. Well, and the one thing you know is that they're not going to stop fighting. But you see, I think Ermac wanted to maybe make a tag there, but Rain was not there yet because he's just holding his ribs. But how about some testicular torture instead? And now Nathan Von Schrader, I thought he was going to go over there and break it up, but I guess picking his spots here a little bit. Yeah. And Ermac's now like, I'm not we see it. He's not having any more kids. That's right. Well, and Von Schrader's too drunk to even get it up anymore. Yeah. And uh, it'll destroy. It'll destroy. Oh, what a boot! Either. And Ermac gets a boot, but Rain was tagged in. Rain is now the legal man. And now, oh, what Simon a belly to belly! I don't think Simon was aware that he got tagged in. No, he definitely wasn't, because he got Ermac that big boot. He was about to capitalize, and there he <laughs> what? And a whiff. A whiff because Rain, Belmont was hurt. 
Yeah, at this point in the match, you cannot afford these whips rain. Well, and how how much does fatigue fit and factor in now that we are almost 10 to 12 minutes into this matchup? Yeah, and did you see Simon kept kicking him in the midsection? Yeah, he did, and then immediately, maybe smartly, tagging Ermac out. I wonder if Von Schrader saw that. Sweeping DDT. DDT. Von Schrader's legal, Ermac's legal. This is our opening tag match, and what an opening tag match it has been. And now, oh, what a neck breaker there from Belmont on the outside. Simon just took his damn head off. And Simon, his athleticism is impressing me tonight, man. Everybody's athleticism is impressing me tonight. They, they're, oh, my, they, man. Oh, nice hip turn. Ermac and Simon just have a bone to pick with each other in this match. Well, if you recall, it was Simon Belmont that pinned Ermac after Ermac beat Von Schrader in that Soul Calibur gauntlet. And oh, a and there was the Samoa Joe swat from Rain. Oh, and a yeah. kick, and a oh, thrust man. kick from Von Schrader. Oh man! Oh Things man! Things are not looking good for the mortal combatants here. No, but I will say they have given everything they have to this contest. This, this is, has been a hell of a tag match. This has been a brutal. I mean, it's more than just a tag match. This has been a fight. You know, you can't yeah. get these guys to necessarily wrestle all that much when it comes to this kind of deal. And who is going to come out on top of this nice fireman's carry, take a drink, or a scoop of ice cream? Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, here it is. Here we here go. Here it is. We said, were we going to see it? This is for Ermac, Elmo, Ermo, and Elmac. Ermac's elbow right in the center of the ring. Cover him, Ermac. Oh, the cover. One, two, three. He didn't get there in time. Oh, uh, Simon did not get there in time. Ermac. The children go wild. That's right. Early for the Ermac household. After what I thought was going to, they were getting very close to losing that match on a number of occasions, but the combatants persevere. Dude, can you imagine what the bedroom of, of Ermac and Elmo is going to be like tonight with that win? Oh, well, you, he might get a sister after all. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Raymond Souls, your victors here in the opening contest of Thanks Grappling. What a match. What you know a match! That's right. I, well, I believe it, and uh, but we'll talk about a biz a little bit later. But we've got more matches to come up, and one of the things you got to do when you got a kid is clean up, and that's what this match is tonight. It is Doctor Dirty Getting versus Getting Down and Dirty. That's right. It is Captain Planet versus Doctor Dirty. Now this match came about because as we've talked over the past several weeks, Josh again, and actually several months. Dr. Dirty's apartment is now basically just completely fumigated because he's the only one in it. In the whole he's complex. Like, he's like the poop-eating lady on that one episode of Order. Yes. So in, in, the, in the whole context of this, Captain Planet's like, dude, Mr. Clean, you're still my friend. I, you, you are better than this. It's time to clean up your act. Dr. Dirty oh. said no. And so we're having this match. So now the way this is going to work is if Captain Planet wins... Dr. Dirty has to clean up his apartment. And he has to clean everything up. He has to actually start cleaning things again. He can't just be lazy and, and hang out with Captain Pollution. And of course, Pollution is very pissed that the alter ego of himself has the balls to try and take the guy that he took away from him. And you got to think about the environment. I've heard that Dr. Dirty's apartment is so bad, it's actually like polluting the air and threatening the ozone layer in that particular neck of the woods. Dr. Dirty's Dr. Dirty's apartment is so bad that Garbage Island has filed the trademark subpoena. And <laughs> that's how bad we're talking about here. And Captain Planet's like, this can't stand anymore. I'm Don Cheadle. This is my robe. We've got to be, I've got to take this guy down. So we'll have to see what happens. This you is, can smell Dr. Dirty's apartment from other planets. That's oh, yeah. How bad it's got. I mean, uh, we're lucky here. Corleone kind of defumigates the whole venue before we get in, but here goes. No, I'm pretty sure it is your fault, actually. Um, and here comes Grime Time, and oh, Captain yeah. Pollution uh, is still wearing the greatest championship. Yeah. He doesn't I defend it. That, I was hoping. I was hoping that Tails would be able to take it off of him, but that didn't work out very well. Yeah, no, and he's still just, he's still holding on to the belt, thinking, I, I doubt that he's ever going to defend it here, you know, yeah. but he just likes wearing it, and, and Captain Pollution, in this matchup, I got two questions for you, Josh, again. 
if Dr. Dirty wins, can he do it on his own? And how much of a factor is Captain Pollution going to be in this match? And who you got? That was three um, questions, but don't ask questions. <laughs> um, answer to question one, no. If you, if I absolutely, Captain Pollution is going to get involved. I mean, <clears throat> what he always does, that's his MO. Yeah. Uh, and because of that, I have, a, I have a sneaking suspicion that that room is never going to get cleaned. Well, it's definitely possible. But there's a nice clothesline to start. And what do you think Captain Pollution, or Captain Planet, rather, he knows what Captain Pollution is. He's him. So yeah. what does he have to do to secure victory here against Dr. Dirty and keep Captain Pollution at bay? Well, number one, uh, he needs to stay away from that part of the ring. He needs to wash his hands after every time he does literally anything because, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a germaphobe, according to my brother. Uh... And yeah, he just needs to stay clean, And but he might need to fight, ironically, he might need to fight a little dirty. Yeah, well, it's 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 gonna take more than just clean wrist locks and head locks to beat yeah. a man like Dr. Dirty, who is notorious for not being afraid to take any out that he can. But there, how about that? How about a nice knee into the Ooh. corner there from pa Captain Planet? There we go. And who is our referee for this match? Our referee for the whole night is Kevin James. All right. And uh, it, with, with the exception, he's out of the line of fire. That's right. Well, thankfully, no cage matches where he didn't get told that he shouldn't belong. Oh God! Oh. Close line of pollution, and that's there how you keep go. this match at bay. And even, even Captain Planet's like, "Come on, man, come at me!" Oh man, preemptively neutralizing a potential problem right there. Well, that might be the way to go, but he can't focus too much on pollution, because otherwise yeah. he's going to lose it. Oh, German counter! Landed Ooh. on his feet, and instead got to get a nice attack to the leg and the knee. That was a slick counter there by Captain Planet. Yeah, it definitely was. Well, Captain Planet, who has just been on just the saddest of losing streaks, you know, yeah. just cannot seem to ever win anything ever half the time. And so what do you think, how much does this mean for Captain Planet's career? What happens if he loses this tonight? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, the Ozone is literally under siege by the apartment of Dr. Dirty, and his whole thing is protecting the environment. If yeah. he can't win this match and protect the environment, I mean, I, I see numerous mounting bills to pay for therapy appointments in his future. Well, and, and what does his future mean in CIW? You know, sometimes, you know, you lose enough matches where you're trying to make that statement, and all of it, you know, that's a slippery slope. It's a slippery yeah. slope in CIW. There is turnaround here. Nice double forearm there from Captain Planet, though. And the cover on to Dr. Dirty. One, two, and no, only two. Ooh, that was closer than I thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it was definitely close. And, and this is what he has to do is stay on him. Oh, and a low blow. Oh, Message no. sent. And, of course, folks... Right through the little planeteers. That's right. And, of course, folks, Corleone's rules mean that low blows are legal in the ring. Uh... It's a, it's a little bit of a madhouse out here in, in CIW, but that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, we like it. And yeah, right into the corner again. And now, oh, God, just shoulder block into the corner. Clean break, clean... Oh, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> that might have just pissed him off. That was Well, that was a clean break, but now, now begging Dr. Dirty to get up on, even though he left the ring, and he's yeah, up... Th this kind of concerns me. These, these erratic decisions by Captain Planet. Sometimes they come to bite him, and he needs to he needs to calm down with that kind of shit. Well, they absolutely they absolutely do. We've seen that manifest itself many, many times before. And now vertical, oh, nice vertical suplex. Textbook almost. Man, this match has been mostly Captain Planet. Yeah, well, Captain Planet, now the cover here, one. Oh, only one this time. Only a one. As Dr. Dirty, and I mean, I appreciate the fact that he's staying on him and staying on the cover. You know, each pin is a little more energy you have to expend in the middle of the match, and a big back body drop. Damn, big back body drop. Who do you have winning this match, Sean? Well, I was going to say Dr. Dirty cover on the big back body drop. One, only one. And I was going to say Dr. Dirty because of the numbers game, but right now playing it, oh, God. Oh, man. Enough with the dirty offense. I get it that that's your thing, that's your gimmick, that's your, your dirty. Mess, message Stop. sent. Stop. The, Dr. Dirty sure is. Receiving messages by now. Dr. Dirty is literally the girl who texts you nine messages because she'll send half a sentence 
press send. Send the rest of the sentence, press send. Send another message, press send. So you get a paragraph in about 14 different messages. Dude, I don't like how you're describing my mom right now. Yeah. Because that is just way too accurate. Yeah, shot to the knee. It's, it's sadly more ubiquitous than you think. There it is! Oh, There's another God. one. And now, now this might get bad. And of course, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> what a sequence! No. Dirty went for a splash and missed, and instead Captain Planet clothesline pollution. Man, this is not going... And a low blow. Enough. <laughs> now, <laughs> stop being a teenage girl. Message said. Oh. Message said. And now back to that. His, uh -oh. his apartment is so dirty that he doesn't even know what his own pronouns are anymore. It's so dirty that he can't see so badly he keeps missing high-end moves. Like a crossbody or that flying forearm that did not land, and now some testicular torture of his own. That, there, there, that you deserve that. After all the messages that you sent unnecessarily. Yeah, and you know I gotta say this, Captain Planet. Just to make the distinction here, it's not like he's doing anything dirty. He's fighting aggressively. Yeah. You know, and there is a difference in wrestling between aggression and dirty tactics. Exactly. You know, and now, and now, nice he another. Who hasn't delivered thirty-seven low blows? That's right. And now, but he will deliver his third straight forearm. And Dr. Dirty is not looking good here, man. I mean, I mean, most of this match has been all Captain Planet. Yeah, Captain... I mean, I think he realizes that he doesn't exactly have the greatest uh, win-loss record yeah. in wrestling history. Oh, but hey, one thing I was thinking about, Ermac kind of had that same problem. And look how he's oh, turning things. Wait a second! Wait a second! The Dirty Eraser! Oh, Dr. No. Dirty at the Dirty... Captain Planet kicks right out of it! Wow. Planetizer! He just Planetizer. hit a planetizer! Oh out of Cover goddamn nowhere! The cover! Oh after God. a magic eraser! One! Two! He got him! There we go! Tides are a turn in here! Yeah, he sure did! He so sure clean did! Your room, Mr. Uh, wait a second! Wait a second! Did you see the body? He's wearing white! He's wearing white! He did it! He killed Mr. Clean! My man is back! My man! After so long! He cleaned his room so fast. The CIW Stalwart, my favorite wrestler, is back! Thank you, Planet! Clean impact wrestling. Thank you, Captain Planet. I can you have a job here for almost your life. And now, now we have to shift. Now we have to shift here into another personal feud. And I still don't quite understand the nature of this one, Josh Geddon. Eminem versus Dave Chappelle. Special referee is the man who managed him, James Marks. Yeah. And perhaps he gave him like a communist manifesto and it just drove him insane. I don't know. Well, this all started, as you recall... When during the, I believe it was the pre-show of Autumn Asylum, we, Eminem was scheduled to take on Grime Time, the team we just saw also split up, at least I assume that now. Uh, and they were supposed to take them on in a tag match, and prior to that match, Eminem just beat the holy hell out of Dave Chappelle in the bar. And, and Dave Chappelle, he fought his ass off, but it was just not enough. And we wondered where James Marks was. We don't know where his loyalties lie, but I get the feeling we might just find out here tonight who you got, Josh, again. We don't know, honestly. I still don't know what the deal is, but I know that Dave Chappelle is, is just, has been waiting for this, and he's pissed. So I'm going to go with Dave Chappelle. Well, from what I could understand, because it was very hard because he left a voicemail, but he rapped the whole thing, and he did that really, really fast rap, so like I, I didn't quite get all the words. But basically, the whole point of what Eminem is trying to do here is they have been a tag team for nine years, Josh Gettin. Yeah. And what really do they have to show for it? Um, hydraulics. The hydraulics, which they don't even use when they come to the ring together. And... <laughs> Part of that was, you know, during the Exceeds Rumble that Eminem and Dave Chappelle were in, they had a moment where Chappelle kind of moved Eminem to the side. Of course, Dave Chappelle lasted longer in that match than Eminem did. And I guess Eminem saw that as his, his chance to actually do something in this company for a change. Feels that Chappelle was holding him back and said he wasn't going to do that anymore. 
Did they ever win the CIW tag team titles? Not once. Man. They competed for them, but they never years. won. So I, mean, I can kind of understand that, but still, I just throwing away a nine-year partnership in just a very brutal fashion. Yeah, I mean, they, they, statement, I guess. they didn't even talk it out or anything. It just went straight from like zero to a hundred. But then we've got this X factor here in James Marks, and I, I wonder whether you were saying whether it was a communist manifesto or just speaking into Eminem's ear or Dave's ear, for all I know, is James Marks influencing any of this? Perhaps. Does he? Did he even know that was going to happen? Because he wasn't there during the pre-show. We never saw James Marks arrive once. I mean, if we know anything about commie pinkos, it's that you can never trust them. Well, I suppose you can't, but here the Black Rose of apparently Stalingrad. <laughs> James, Am I allowed to say commie pinkos on air? Uh, it's, I think we're well past that point. But trust me, compared to some of the stuff we've said before, that's like Mickey Mouse stuff. And You know what? You're right. You know, but in any case, uh, James Marks, and what kind of influence is he going to have as official? And we did it. We were able to give Kevin James a little bit of a break, and he's going to need it for our main event tonight of Kratos and the Grim Reaper. Oh, God. Imagine being the referee for that man. Yeah, well, Kevin James is going to. But this first match between white and black baldies, here we go. Who you got? <laughs> okay, who you got? <laughs> Just making sure you were paying attention here. Oh, and, oh I was, and and, and now, now oh, and now a right hand from Chappelle kind of hit both guys. Uh, both. I would not want to do that with the uh, special guest referee because that could turn things south in a in a heartbeat. Yeah, definitely. But Dave Chappelle, he's already made a good counter, nice suplex there. And the thing is, Dave Chappelle has got a lot more technical acumen. We've seen the Chappelle lock. Finished a number of individuals, of course, made it to the second round of the King of the Spring Tournament. Mm -hmm. And actually, I take that back. No, he didn't. He lost to uh, lost to Smoke or Prince of Persia. I can't remember which one. But he still got a very long close. Year, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But, you know, you you know, I, Josh, again, why don't you tell them how they can find out how that whole King of the Spring went down? Because they can find if it somewhere. Like, if you share and you subscribe and you also save a referee today, which may also be James Mark, so you might, you might... If you want to join the Communist Manifesto, well, then like, comment, and subscribe. Well, you should know, Josh, again, that we actually don't fund uh, special referees. It's just referees. Oh, okay. Because, you know, it's like, with the exception of Corderas on the second round, because he came back a second time uh, to officiate Satan and the Grim Reaper last week, or last month, But rather. if you want to be a communist, you come to the right place. Well... Maybe not CIW, but talk to James Marks specifically. He might be able to give you, like, a pamphlet or something. But Communist Impact Wrestling. You know, it was, I found it very interesting just in that moment as Dave Chappelle was kind of getting his faculties that James Marks and Eminem seemed to be in the ring having a bit of a conversation. Yeah, I did notice that myself. And I'm not sure where that's going to lead, but a nice backbreaker there from Dave Chappelle. As nice. these two try to figure it out. Nice knife edge chop. And pretty much down the middle thus far. Yep, so. and James Marks trying to keep this impartial as he can. I don't know if there's a weird race undertone to this, you know, whether that's a problem with Eminem or, you know, it's now another nice shot, hip toss there from Eminem. So far, a little bit back and forth in the early going. Yeah, I mean, excuse me. This is going to be interesting. I mean, imagine if Eminem goes through all of this and then loses this match. He told, well, he definitely could. You remember the Iron Man match he had with John Cena? Well, yes, how could I forget? Yeah, exactly, because well, you couldn't see his opponent. But, yeah, that is true. But, no, that's the, it's Eminem has had opportunities, and I think that might lead to part of the frustration. You know, it's, it's not like he hasn't had looks. It's not like these two haven't competed for tag titles. Even in CIW versus TAW, they had maybe their best match ever and, and still so lost. Long. You know, yeah, I think that that might have been... Mind. That very well might have been the straw that broke the camel's back for Eminem. We don't know. We don't yeah. know enough about this situation yet. Oh, what a knee to the face. Ooh. Referees count up to five. And uh, Dave's going to have to get one or both of them back into the ring here. I and mean, there's nothing really worse than stagnation. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're stagnant about a lack of success. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they should have called the last couple of years over there on Magnation Green and Blue, the stagnation. <laughs> stagnation <laughs> red. Yeah. Oh my god. 
That's kind of how it went down. But in any case, yeah, there's, there's kind of a reason why they don't make videos anymore. Yeah, now, but uh, now a nice body slam there from Dave Chappelle. And so far, right now, Josh, again, Dave, uh, James Marks has really been doing a pretty decent job officiating. And, and Dave Chappelle has been in control for most of this match. Oh yeah, well he has, but Eminem. And dice too soon. Yeah, all it takes is a thumb to the eye and a throwback. Ooh, nice combination there. Yeah, I'm not super crazy about the thumb to the eye, but... Well, but sometimes that's the kind of advantage you need to take. And now, speaking of taking advantage, Boston Crab into the corner, and now James Marks counting very slowly that count of five. Count up to three. Of course, a five count is a break. And, wow, Eminem exhausted himself through that crab. That did some damage, though. That slow count uh, may have benefited Eminem because he got the damage to back him yeah, a lot. Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, one thing, I mean, in matches, when you get to the ropes, you think, like, eventually, yeah, they're going to let go of me. So you kind of stop fighting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then, they, and then they're not letting go, and you're like, shit. Yeah, that's that always leads to problems. And right here in the thicket of this matchup, we've got Dave Chappelle and Eminem fighting there, fighting for I'm not even sure what. Right now, I guess... This is maybe this has been mounting up more than we think, you know. Maybe they're, they're fighting over who is the weak link. Well, and what? Who knows what words have been exchanged between these two? What Dave Chappelle has said after some of those losses, where they have yeah. to go back and sit in the locker room and go, "What happened here? Where is this team there going?" So many times you can have that conversation. Yeah, well, especially nine years running. Yeah, that's imagine having the same conversation for nine years. Yeah, what is it? Groundhog's Day. And uh, no, it's not. It's Thanksgiving. And we thank you very much for inviting you all into uh, our home here in CIW and us inviting us into your home there, wherever yeah. you may be watching. I'm still hungry. Feed me. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm still waiting on those Corleone mashed potatoes that he said he was going to bring here. Ooh, and oh, nice leg drop. Nice big leg drop there from Dave Chappelle. Eminem reeling a little bit. Here in his. Oh, it's, no. Uh, Low blow message sent. Uh, Message Man. sent and a wrist lock. As that might be like after the attack. That might be the only message that was sent between the two of them because I, I feel like they're not exactly on speaking terms. Right now. Well, oh, and well, and Eminem oh, might not be on shoulder that terms. Hurt my shoulder. Yeah, because he went right into the ring post. Dave Chappelle very cognizant of his ring presence. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the, spear. the spear into Dude. the corner, and Eminem is groggy. Is this what you were trying to do? Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, and Eminem just like throwing his hand to the side, like, come at me, bro. And, oh, man. well, you know, Dave Chappelle's not happy about this. You know, he, you would have thought he might have thought that maybe they were just about to get there. What, who would have known what would have happened if they had stayed as a team? But Eminem made sure that wasn't going to happen. Although, at that same token, it could have been another nine years of stagnation. Yeah, well, you just don't know. And maybe you that. Imagine that's Can you the imagine problem. wrestling for 18 years and just being in the same exact spot? I don't know. Let's call Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, I was going to say, there's quite a number of people we might be able to ask that question to. But, oh, and it went for a drop kick countered by Chappelle. And these guys, you could see the amount of counters these two were throwing back and forth at each other. They know each other very well. Yeah, they definitely do. And there's a great shoulder block there from Eminem this time. And now wrenching the back. Just viciously Perfect. wrenching the back of Dave now Chappelle. Dave, Dave is nowhere near the ropes. You know, this time not enough to go get a submission on that exchange. But it's one of these two men. Real quick, I guarantee you that if we are going to have a Thanksgiving turkey, that um, Corleone would have went out and shot and killed the turkey himself. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, he it's, he's up. But, you know, it's a funny thing. He actually uh, agrees with Ben Frank. Oh, Chappelle Lock! Chappelle Lock! Oh, oh, God. He's got the Chappelle Lock! And, oh, wait a second! Wait a damn second here! Uh, seriously? Well, I guess now we know our answer. The octopus! Uh, the the octopus! He can't tap out. You're the ref! <laughs> but I guess uh, I guess now we know. Mark, does that count? Well, I guess it, it's gonna count now, because now it's a two-on-one, and one of those people is the wow. official. Wow. And I was praying we wouldn't see this. But Man. of course okay, well, alright. That was an right. errant punch to Eminem. I don't know if that was intentional. But Maybe he was just saying, finish him now. Yeah, wake up, bro. Wake up, bro. I'm finally, I've made my choice. And I wonder if that's what James Marks was put in this position by Coleone for. 
you know, like go in the <laughs> ring, make your choice who you're going to ally with, but you have to make the choice because you're the referee of this matchup. So Dave Chappelle is a capital. I knew it. Well, I'm not necessarily going to blame him for that. I mean, oh, and a <laughs> kick to the outside. I mean, he's made a hell. Oh, come on, no, no. And wow. James Marks counting irrationally. The count up to seven. And now it's just going away. Like, come on, I'm waiting. Come on, man. Get your ass back in here. Count up to nine. <laughs> punches him back. He literally exhausted himself counting to seven. Yeah. Well, but it's not like James Marks has really done. I mean, up to a minute ago, his, his officiating was solid. And now he's up to the top rope. Come on, man. Elbow drop to Chappelle. Oh. And... Folks, I don't like predicting winners here, but I think I know who's going to win this match. And, uh, oh, and a brass knucks punch as if oh, it matters. No. It's the ref. What are you going to do? And now into the corner. And now, now James Marks, now he's really going after Dave Chappelle. Does Dave not have any friends in the back? Apparently. I mean, Somebody get this, out this here. Is, this is less about winning a match. This is more about just punishment. Yeah, and, and, and why? Because... Somebody who's not even involved in this team for the majority of it is upset that Eminem can't win matches. I, this is this is disgusting. This is disgraceful. I mean, this is honestly what all communists would love to do to capitalism. This is a thorough thrashing. Yeah, a thrust kick to the skull to remind Dave Chappelle of his place, and it's, this is abominable. And now, now Dave trying to fight back. And just, it, it, the numbers game just too much. How could you possibly win this match when the referee is against you? Yeah, well, he, he's not going to count Eminem's shoulders to the mat. You can almost guarantee that. Yeah. So now, in, in a similar manner, in the second time we've seen Dave Chappelle in his many matches, we're begging for the referee to end the match. Yeah. As opposed to <laughs> Dave Chappelle trying to win it. The, I don't even think it's even really possible, but... I mean... I mean it, he would have, they have to make James Marks basically have no choice. And now just wrenching the leg. He's not even counting barely with the rope break. This is about punishing Dave Chappelle. Yeah. This is, you can, well, you can hear him yelling, you're a loser. You're a loser, Dave. You're a loser. Yeah. Well, and, and James Marks, I know that he's, uh, he's big in the alphabet community. They really love and respect him. So I think that some of the things that Dave has said, it probably perturbed him, but, yeah. you know, he was hoping that maybe if they won, they'd be able to neglect it. But this this, this, is, this is not good. This yeah. is not good. What is, what is this? What is oh, this? No. Oh, 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 oh. Dear What God. a back suplex by the referee. Just, by the referee. Just end it. Yeah. Just end it. This is like, you. this is almost I'm trying not to have Dave Chappelle ever wrestle again. And now a double arm suplex. Man. And James and Marks. not even bothering going for a cover. James Marks has thrown Dave Chappelle off three out of the four corners of this ring. This entire match, even when we thought that uh, James Marks was calling it down the middle. I don't think Eminem has gone for a cover one. Not once. And now a five-knuckle shuffle as James Marks is dancing around Dave Chappelle. And Man. and this is and it's not over. It's not done. The punishment will continue. Yeah, seriously. And this is this is no revolution today. This is a this is just revolting. Yeah. This is disgusting. This and and Eminem, just just end this. And Dave Chappelle throughout all of this, and we saw this before, he's fighting, but now we are going to see the curtain call. There it is. And not Gold Dust one, but the album named one. And Eminem, now for the cover, for God's sakes. One, two, three. Wow. Well, at least James Marks counted normally. I guess. Is that one, is that the redeeming quality to take out of this? I don't know, man. This is just... I'm bummed. I'm yeah, bummed. Me me too. That was sad. This was a heart and soul tag team of CIW just split in half. We get Mr. Clean back and we lose Salt and Pepper. Yeah, I mean, things are changing rapidly. Yeah, and what does this mean? What does this mean for Dave Chappelle? What does this mean for Eminem and James Marks now? 
You know, where do their careers head? Eminem gets his first singles win, maybe ever, actually. I don't know that for a fact. But I am unimpressed. I am unamused. And I am also very uncomfortable in this chair without mashed potatoes. But it's our main event time. The Grim Reaper, who has beaten Satan twice, including in the last man standing at Halloween, takes on a very angry god of war. The former CIW heavyweight champion Kratos, who lost in shocking fashion at Autumn Asylum to the current CIW heavyweight champion Shiva. He got dominated in that match. Yeah, and, and what was Kratos? Yeah, and what was Kratos' first pinfall loss to his own move? But yeah. his first pinfall loss in history, not counting the one fall that he lost to Magus in the King of the Spring a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But here comes the Grim Reaper, who has got a lot of momentum on his side, Josh Geddon. Oh yeah, ever since he came back, he's been he's been uh, making waves. Yeah, he beat and that last man standing. I mean, that tombstone through the table. This that was is, nice. This is a man that looks much more efficient than he ever has in his TIW career as he saunters his way down to the ring. And the man has been revitalized. That's right. And, uh, folks, just for reference, because if any of you know what Kratos' entrance theme is, we got in a little while. So, oh, yeah. just again, let me just take a moment to tell the folks what's going to be happening in CIW for the foreseeable future. Lay it on me. December 1st, we get a storyline update for Oblivion. Then we have four... Four weeks of Saturday Night Hype, three individual matches, and a pre-show on December 23rd, the day before Christmas Eve. Then on the 30th of December, we have Oblivion Day 1, and then Oblivion Day 2 on the 31st, where Kratos will get his rematch against Shiva. And so mm -hmm. we know that's going to happen. That is guaranteed. That's set in stone, because there's no way in hell we're going to tell Kratos, no, you can't have a rematch. Kratos is like establish a rematch clause just for me, and you're like, all right. Yeah, all right. Like, yeah, you got it, buddy. <laughs> so it's like all you. Want it now? Yeah. Want it now? But we've got there's a lot on the line in the next couple of months. We have not stopped. We have made a vow to make CIW's 2023 the best year ever, and we are well on our way to doing that. Here comes Kratos. I will say 2023 has been the most batshit insane year for CIW. Yeah, it's gone a lot of places, from Fighting oh, You yeah. to King of the Spring to the Summer Series to Autumn Asylum, all the way to the holiday specials between Halloween and now, and yeah. what is to come. And, of course, all culminating in our seven-day, week-long, 10-year anniversary extravaganza. Stay tuned for details on that. It is only getting crazier from here. But here is a man who is not a happy man. No, I, I, I still can't believe that he lost in the fashion that he did. A man who has just done nothing but absolutely dominate the competition. He himself got dominated. Well, there was no one who has really been able to equal this man. Truthfully, the Elder God got close, but who won? Yeah. That would be this guy. And he feels empty without that belt around his waist. He looks naked. He does look naked. It's it's just, it's strange. It just fits so well on him. And now, and I mean. not in a hot way. And no, well, not necessarily. No, not in a hot way. In a, I am the champion. I'm the flagship of this program. And I still feel to some degree he definitely is. But the Grim Reaper is a tough challenge. And when you have lost the match, what that does to you psychologically may change who may be the favorite in this match. I know DraftKings has got this as a pick -a match. Who you got? <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't know. This is going to be the hardest one uh, of the night. Yeah. Tough call here. I mean, that, that kind of a loss. Not just losing him. I felt like if it was like an even battle and then Kratos lost, he still would have been pissed. But yeah. The fact that he got trounced. To his own finish. Yeah. I mean, that could destroy your confidence. I, since the, okay, I'm going to go with an unlikely uh, pick, perhaps. I'm going with uh, the Grim Reaper. Yeah, well, he's got momentum on his side. Kratos does not. There's a nice collar and elbow to start out the match and a wrist lock. And I will not lie to you, a wrist lock was not how I expected Kratos versus the Grim Reaper to start. 
Yeah, but oh, oh here. We and go. now, yeah, this is more what I was expecting. Yeah, this is gonna turn into just a straight up brawl, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and of course the height and weight, the height advantage. Oh, and a German to the Grim Reaper. Oh man. And the height advantage goes to Grim Reaper. The weight advantage probably more to Kratos. And now an arm break. I, I, I think Kratos has the power and speed advantage as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, we've seen the Grim Reaper. He's a lot more of a mosier. But yeah. he's, he's, and Grim Reaper is, but this is another guy. And now, oh, nice counter there from the Grim Reaper, countering that Ooh. German suplex. And oh, and another thrust kick <laughs> to the skull. And that German did connect with it anyway. Yeah, he's like, backflip out of that one, bitch. Yeah, and that was not going to happen, but... Grim Reaper, I mean, it's going to take a lot more punishment than your average Joe to beat a guy like the Grim Reaper, especially the way that he's been taking care of business here in 2023. Absolutely. And look for Gr the Grim Reaper to slow the pace down, because when the pace slows down, it benefits him more to his style. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where we saw Kratos, that. Kratos is more just unleashing devastation. Yeah, and well... But there is some, some smarts to the motivations I'm seeing here from Kratos. I mean, we've seen a couple cross arm breakers trying to stop him from being able to pick him up for that tombstone. Exactly. Those Kratos. And several thrust kicks as well. That's right. Kratos with that lion's head jackhammer that he's not going to stop using, I assume. Yeah. And no, no one, including him, have kicked out of that move. That's right. The main event, of course, of, of Oblivion, the last day of the year, another charming. Dear God. And well, and Kratos is really, you can see this, he is measuring Grim Reaper repeatedly for these shots. Every spot he is picking very selectively, knees to the face. Oh. Man, it's devastating MMA knee strikes right there. Yeah, knees, and Kratos, we've seen Kratos use those knees quite a lot in those devastating oh, shots here. And Grim Reaper, he has not had a chance to breathe oh, for the last gosh. couple of minutes. Man, can, you want to talk about concussion? Oh, my God. Man. My God, oh, Kratos. No. All right. Uh, Kratos, we get it. That is 16 knees to the head consecutively. My God. The Rock is jealous of that. Mankind just got <laughs> flashbacks. My God. My that word. Was, that was brutal. John Cena's throat just started hurting. <laughs> 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 and oh, uh, yeah, now into the corner. And Kratos, oh, Kratos tried to charge in, took a little too much time. and Man, But this this is another problem, perhaps. He gets so enraged that he loses focus. Yeah, well, and Grimm tried to leave there, but that was where the smartness of Kratos to keep him in the ring benefited him greatly. Another counter there. And, oh, I don't know if he meant to do that. Oh, no, He's like, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 okay. No. Okay, he's like, oh, my bad, my bad. But Okay, that I think Kratos needed that to kind of... Re reset and refocus. Like, okay, all right, all right. I need to relax. Yeah, I was I just about to, to say though. To your point, Josh again, he gets a head full of steam to the point where he's collaring up a tie up in Kevin James. You know, he's just yeah. grappling at anything, anybody to yeah. take some of this punishment and get some of this aggression out of him. And An angry fighter is a sloppy fighter. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, and Kratos can't afford to take a second consecutive loss when you think about it. You yeah, know. I mean, especially considering that he is now the number one contender. If he loses, yeah, well, that could change things. You know, Corleone's yeah. not one of those guys who has matches set in stone. If circumstances yeah. change, he will change the circumstances. Dude, so Grim Reaper's got a lot to prove here because he could potentially make himself a number one contender or a world title caliber talent here tonight. Oh, Spike Pile Driver. Oh, right on to the top of his head where he got kneed a hundred times. Sixteen times. Yeah, this Jeez. this can't be good. And a nice uh, nice headlock takeover there from Kratos. Man, As this, this has been a brutal contest. Yeah, and it's been all Chris. The third counter German, and every time... <laughs> Every time oh, that Grim Reaper oh, countered a German, messed up, buddy. every time that Grim Reaper countered a German, Kratos made him pay for it. This may be the most severe lion's head jackhammer. The cover. This one is over. One, two, three. Wow. I don't think there's every any dispute. Time, every time Grim Reaper did that, it pissed him off more. Yeah, I don't think there is any dispute. How Kratos is feeling and how driven Kratos is to get that title back. We just saw him demolish the man who demolished Satan in less than six minutes. Kratos is ready. 
I'm looking forward to this rematch. And folks, I hope you're ready to have that trip to fan sink in. It's time to sleep it off. Thank you all for coming to Thanks Grappling 3. Kratos is your winner. Thanks for coming, Josh, again. And we will see you in a couple weeks for the storyline update. Take care, everybody. I'm still hungry. So is Kratos.